Euzubillahimineşşeytanirracim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Atiye Allah, atiye Rasul ve ulul amri minkum. And always a reminder for myself, an abdukul ajisu, daifu, miskinu, zalimu, jahal. <coughs> but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. And from the, the depth of the reality of La ilaha illallah, Muhammadun Rasulullah wasallam, and the oceans of tawheed. And a simple understanding with a discussion I had with a loved one and that an event happens, somebody said something and we were talking that, why did this person say this? And they went into saying, they said it because of this, because of this, because of this. And our understanding for tonight and how we govern our lives from the ocean of tawheed. That we know there's nothing but Allah and the other side is shaitan, there's no in-between. It's either coming from Divine Grace or it comes from a wickedness, a badness, what people feel comfortable calling. You either make a good choice and there are shades of good or you make a bad choice and then the shades are bad, it can be really bad. So either you're going towards the right or you're going towards the wrong. It's from the tawheed, nothing but Allah and that we follow the example of Muhammadun Rasulullah So when people say, where is this from? This is really from tawheed where people don't understand tawheed because for them they have shades of everything. It could be from anyone, oh they were saying that because and they explain now why they were saying this situation. And I said, yeah, that's how you think things. In our training it all came down to, is this inspired by Allah and I'm moving towards the right or was this inspired by shaitan? Because we understand that there's a play, our life is a play. And the characters are insignificant for us. So whether the characters have two in that scene, because our life every, every moment of our life is a scene. So you're in a situation, you're with somebody, a loved one preferably because they have all your buttons. So somebody dear to you, a family member to you and they begin to start saying things that are not correct in your understanding of faith. And so they say because of this, they said because of this, they said because of this. How we view our lives and our understanding on how to govern ourselves, we say, okay that event let's take it as just one scene. And in that scene the character is me and that other person. But who's really pulling the strings on that scene. If an inspiration is coming in that dialogue from Allah then it has to be to me as something positive, moving towards something positive. Then that scenario in my life I feel that maybe that was then an isharat that the guidance of Allah through His Rasul through the shaykhs inspired this person to a goodness. That was like an interesting thing, I probably should be incorporating that and that I take that understanding as a movement towards the direction of completing my faith. There can only be two or the dialogue has something to do with shaitan because it's in the discussion, so I didn't know that like shaitan is with everyone. That every, every family member, every person can have a shaitan, it says, shaitan came into paradise. There's not a masjid that shaitan's not sitting in and, and sitting in big time amongst people. There's, there's not a grocery store, there's not a place on earth that shaitan is not accompanying somebody. He leaves no one to themselves. His promise to Allah is that, I'm going to hit them from six sides, negative energy. 
hits us from six sides, in front, behind, above, below, to the right, to the left. Six directions of our being is a promise from shaitan and he doesn't break his promise, I'm attacking this creation. Allah attack except my mukhlas. So mukhlas have a sense of a shield that they are attacked but Allah has them to be mahfuz, guarded. That something is coming towards them, they may fall into a difficulty and then Allah guards them, recalibrates and puts them back into position. And this is Qur'an that Allah said, not my mukhlas. So that category is separate, all other than mukhlas you're guaranteed a six directional attack from, neg- from this negativity. So then the wise, every scene is a chess game. Why? If you're good at it, you can do it subconsciously as it's happening because you're prepared. I know every scenario and every step of where I'm going to go, how it's going to be confrontational. I have my wudu, I'm washed, I'm ready, I step into a situation, boom the discussions are going. It's without doubt, it always happens. And they're usually relatives because they have all the buttons. It's not the postman because we're not psychotic, your postman doesn't walk by and start screaming weird things to you. It's the family that have all your buttons want to bring up all these bizarre discussions and this scene is a test. As a result of that test I'm in wudu and when you're more established and experienced you're playing the chess game in your consciousness that you're slowing down the scene and saying, what's that person saying from their mouth and who's really saying it? Because the words they're speaking doesn't seem that that would be from Allah, nor His angels, nor His Prophet nor awliya. So it's very easy that those are not isharat because these are not the words, these are not the understanding. Then this is from who? Shaitan. Shaitan has a hand in everything. We catch it as a continuous consciousness because it's a part of guidance. How could you deal with people if you can't slow the whole situation in your heart and understand what this person is telling you? Because many people come up to you, Shaykh, I want to talk to you but everything is fantastic in my life, I'm great. It don't matter what your lips say, we know what you're doing, what you are, what you say. So they have to be good in it for the world of guidance. Otherwise could you imagine being a guide and taking what people say from their lips? Allah just says, no, we'll seal their lips. Allah already gave the criteria for governance that when they enter into the heavens and want to talk we'll seal their lips because we don't care for what people say from their mouth. That's a different subject but as far as understanding life understanding life scenarios, these are important because they say, well I didn't, I didn't think it was, had something to do with shaitan, I thought this is just discussion and this person is saying this and that person is saying that. I say, yeah but if you think of it as it's not a play and that people are really saying something and want to do this and want to do that, it, it affects your coordinates and your understanding and you reaching tawheed. Because when you want to reach to tawheed everything is a scenario, is this pushing me towards Allah this moment, this test, this very second or is this having to do with shaitan and the shaitan trying to take me off my course. If we can catch those scenarios and not be lost in the excitement of the scene because people play the scene out and go through the, all the emotions and, oh my God, what is your… and get lost in the scene, get lost in the drama of that scene and they never step back like a chess game that, what does Allah want from this scenario? Why is this happening? Why did this person say this? Who's actually saying and where are they trying to move my direction? Very few people even understand that, really grasp that. Fewer will try to catch it 
Most are lost in the scene, they begin the battle, the yelling, the screaming, being upset that why this person said, why that person said this. And tariqah is all about tafakkur, to contemplate. So you sit then all of a sudden you go into scenarios, some people say, give it like an example, you go to scenarios, scenario, it's a family event and the person who you know always has something to say that, why you have to look like this? And why does it have to always be so extreme your belief system? And get a whole discussion, whether why you have to wear this hat, why you have this, have this beard? This all seems to you like it's a discussion that we should be having, okay this is discussion. But for the conscious observer is that before you get trapped into an argument and a discussion and I'm going to change the opinion of this person, subconsciously you pull back a second and say, this is not going to be coming from Allah. This is not a discussion coming from Allah What this person is saying is that if we could see them, because everybody's good, their soul, but if we could see the scenario most likely they have like a shaitan on them because it's everywhere, it's not a bad person. Everyone has shaitans with them except mukhlas. They have a shaitan on them whispering through their ear and keep pushing to say something because our life we know is a test. Our life is a complete where shaitan saying, I want this guy from six directions. And I know that when he steps into that living room, we're coming after him. When you believe that, you don't fall all the time. Because remember the, the example of retarded or mentally disturbed person? Retarded they say is not a polite word, somebody who's mentally challenged or in a psychiatric ward. They said, what was the example? Is that you do the same thing and you always expect a different result. Tariqah comes to say, look why are we acting like we're crazy? Don't you want to lift yourself from craziness and enter matureness? Matureness is to say that, I cannot do the same thing always expecting something different as an outcome, it's the same thing. I have to resolve this, I have to find the problem, take the problem out and make an issue to be resolved because Allah says what, we don't change the condition of a person until they change themselves. That's the same thing of escaping from an insane asylum. They don't let you check out because you keep failing and doing the same thing every day and something different is going to happen. They say, every time I cross this road I get hit by a car. And every day I cross the same place, well every day you're going to get hit by a car. Until one time the aql opens, the heart opens and says, maybe I should not be crossing from here that the car keeps hitting me. Tariqah then comes and says, slow the situation down like a chess game. That you wash, you put your taweez, a dialogue is happening, you know that when you enter into that scenario this event is going to begin. How are you prepared for it? The minute somebody starts to speak, you know, is this coming from Allah? MashaAllah this is great, this is beautiful, I love what you're doing, you're purifying yourself. Alhamdulillah you, you left the desires for dunya, you're doing your zikr, you're doing your awrads. So this is a ishara from Allah, MashaAllah somebody's happy up there. But it's the other side, why you look like that? You have to do all that? Is, would Allah tell you not to do zikr? Would Allah tell you, why you have to make tasbih? No, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to understand. So then in your heart you're slowing down, hmm. Okay, so now this is not between me and that person and that relative, this is about me and shaitan that's behind that person. So you went to the core of the problem now, it's not the characters in this movie. It's the other problems. So when I take the characters out and now I want to deal with how shaitan is coming at me. If I understood that in life then I just stay quiet, I'm not going to convert shaitan. He's well, way too advanced to fall into a discussion. 
And you know you fell when you start to engage with shaitan because now he's got you. You don't conquer him, you will not conquer him, you'll be the only person in, in creation that was able to conquer him. Allah's reward was, A'uzu Billah, disengage. Allah never gave, you go after him and argue with shaitan, he said, seek refuge in me from shaitan. So in your heart, A'uzu Billah min shaitan ar-deen. And you stay quiet, means you put your reality and you went back into Allah that my faith and trust in Allah my dominion is not to now come out and deal with shaitan. If we can do that enough times we become sincere. We're not becoming agitated because shaitan wants to agitate you. He wins when you become angered, riled up, two, three words you're now in an anger, you're in an argument. It's not a righteous argument because it started off with shaitan, there's nothing righteous at all. It's just going to be satanic, more and more aggression, bad character and now your rank is going down instead of going up, you're getting check marks off and that's how he's winning. Oh look, I thought he's a very patient guy, he's yelling now. I thought he's, he's not a, he doesn't have anger, now he's turning red <laughs> and that's how he's winning, he's happy, he's like check, 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 check until you leave that house fully defeated and so sad and so upset because you spent the whole week to build yourself or a month to build yourself or a day to build yourself. That's what it means to struggle. Struggle thinking what? That you're going to go down the street, there's somebody with horns on the, on the corner and he's coming after you with a pitchfork. No, it's all the people we love and that Evilness coming and whispering and pushing through them to see what type of character you're going to have, what type of reaction you're going to have. They come through babies, you sit on a plane and the baby in front was screaming for at least two hours on the plane and it, it was a scream like it was in a horror movie. I'm hearing the yelling from a horror movie. And I'm trained in it, so it's okay, I know shaitan is, is hurting or, or making or making that child to be fearful. He's doing something to that child, the child is seeing and screaming. Why? Because he wants someone to be angered, something's supposed to be happening. No doubt the guy over onto the other side, he's getting angry, you see he's getting red. Something's about to, like he's going to explode and start screaming at the person. So it means it's chess game. You sit back, you meditate, oh, oh, what's happening? That's not one time, no, here for a half an hour, 45 minutes, wow, ah, <laughs> And this is our whole life. Our whole life is about identifying every scene, why is it happening? In the conscious, in my consciousness that what's this scenario? I'm to be patient in this scenario and then I train myself to drown out sound and noise. Means everything and everything coming to a believer is a test. If you think for a moment you're test free, you fail that moment. There's not a second or a millisecond in which God is heedless of you. And that you're not under a test and that your reaction is not being watched and that your interaction is not being observed. So then to reach towards sincerity and to achievement and that's why Prophet described it as an immense struggle, Jihad al-Akbar. Jihad is a fight and Akbar means great huge fight. And he described the greatest fight is the one who fights himself and that's why it's such a difficult process to stop at every scenario that, why this person said that? And then how is this going to be affecting me? Not the why that to come after you but the why of what shaitan is trying to do to me. How is he trying to defeat me? How is he trying to get me to be angered? How is he trying to, to, to bring my station down? 
So it's not about the people. We hold all the characters to be harmless because Allah's testing me. Allah allowed shaitan to enter into that scene and now to make everything to be exciting, spicy. The one whom is able to meditate, contemplate and struggle against themselves. They catch every dialogue and in their heart they analyze that dialogue. Is this drawing me to the Divine? Then alhamdulillah, if it's not and it's of negativity, there's no need to go further into this. And that's why Sufis don't fight. They don't yell and scream at a place. They actually stay quiet and move away and say, oh, where, where are you guys, where are you running to? So there's nothing to do with me. We're not here to play with shaitan, we're here to make Rahman happy and to achieve God's satisfaction. For if enough times he's happy, then you'll be granted and crowned with sincerity, that you sincerely struggle against yourself. Not that you're enormously victorious. But you're able to identify how this is coming, identify how shaitan is attacking you and then Allah begin to grant the servants sincerity and they move towards being mukhlas. When they become mukhlas Allah guards them. And they become mahfuz, guarded in which lots of inspirations come to them and as a result as soon as they enter into a room the angels are whispering that shaitan is coming after you, remain silent. Means th th there's a lot of tools at Allah's disposal to begin to guide and help the servant. We pray that we give an understanding to ourselves on this scenario and this understanding because this loved one was very astonished, oh shaitan's everywhere thinking that you know there's only a time when we're battling shaitan. I say, no our battle with shaitan is at every moment. If you think that shaitan taking a break for a millisecond then something is wrong in the aqeedah and the belief of that person. That that fight is a continuous fight, he's not happy at all of what you're achieving nor is he interested in you achieving and every time you achieve he goes down in his achievement. And if you reach close enough, can you play a game to lose because it's chess or put checkers. Every time you're getting close to the target you're going to be crowned, huh? If your king reaches the other side you, you get it to be a crowned special king that can move like the queen. You know why the queen is so powerful that moves everywhere. The king can only move one space at a time. But if you move all the way to that end you'll be crowned. You think shaitan sits there and lets you play, please go right here, crown yourself. No because then you become much more difficult to deal with. Every time you become powerful you become much more difficult to deal with. So the game's on, he doesn't take a break. It's a matter of us is leaving our heedlessness where we become heedless every moment, oh yeah, yeah you're right he is attacking, he is attacking. Means then we put our notes, we put our post-it notes so that my fight with evilness is a continuous fight at every moment it's approaching me. And at every scenario I have to have a consciousness and as soon as I become good at it I can slow a scene down in my heart and begin to analyze right away that this is not going to go in the direction that makes Allah happy, this is going to go into something that defeats me and brings me down, get angered to be in a bad situation. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon wa salaam al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa. وبسير سورة الفاتحة الصنام